Does Accutane really cause depression? Let's dive in and explore the facts starting right now. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dr. Dustin channel. Today, we're diving into one of the most talked about acne medications in the world, isotretinoin, more commonly known by its old brand name, Accutane. In this video, we're gonna explore several things. First, whether Accutane truly causes depression. Second, its overall safety profile and the key benefits. Third, the long-term outcomes, including relapse rates for acne. And fourth, the evidence-based over-the-counter and lifestyle alternatives if you don't wanna take Accutane. I've done a deep dive into the research on this topic and I'm here to give you the facts so that you can make the best decisions for your skin and health Let's get started. Let's kick things off with the question on everyone's mind when it comes to Accutane. Does Accutane cause depression? There have been media stories and anecdotal reports suggesting that it might lead to mood changes or even suicidal thoughts. However, when we look at large scale studies and meta analyses, which are usually the best type of evidence that we have in medicine, the evidence tells a different story. A 2019 meta analysis in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology concluded that overall, there was no clear link between isotretinoin use and an increased risk of depression. In fact, in these studies, many patients' moods actually improved after their severe acne cleared. The likely reason for this improvement in mood is that severe acne in and of itself can be a huge source of stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem, and alleviating these burdens often benefits the mental health of patients. I've been prescribing Accutane for 10 years, and over the course of that time, I've only had one patient that developed severe depression while on the medication. And we did stop Accutane for a while, and they received treatment for depression, and several weeks later, they returned to my clinic we restarted their Accutane and they completed their course without incident. Now again, this is an anecdotal report, but when we look at the overall data, it doesn't seem to cause depression. Now that doesn't mean that we can ignore personal experiences if you or someone you know notices depressive symptoms or shifts in your mood while taking Accutane, so it's crucial to speak up if that happens to you or a loved one. Consult both a dermatologist and a mental health professional if needed, and monitoring here is key, and that's what we do when we put somebody through a course of Accutane. The scientific consensus so far just suggests that isotretinoin is not a direct cause of depression, and I'm gonna have a couple of links down in the video description if you'd like to check out articles on PubMed and see what these meta-analyses say for themselves. Next up, I wanna talk about isotretinoin's overall safety and the benefits of taking Accutane. So we're gonna zoom out to those safety benefits at a bigger picture. Accutane is a potent oral retinoid. We talk about retinol all the time on social media, things like tretinoin, adapalene, or over-the-counter retinol. This is an oral form of retinol. It works on multiple fronts when we're treating acne. First, it drastically reduces sebum or oil production in the skin. It also helps to fight cutibacterium acnes, the bacteria that causes acne, and it has been shown to help calm inflammation. Because of this multi-pronged attack, it is considered the gold standard for treating stubborn, severe cystic acne, including those that will cause scarring. According to the studies of Accutane, real-world clinical reports suggest that a 15 to 20 week course can lead to an 80 to 90% improvement in severe acne. Now, this can be life-changing for patients who've tried everything else without success. But there are side effects. The most common side effect is that people will experience very dry skin and lips. I mean, chapped lips are almost impossible to avoid while taking Accutane. Some people will notice dry eyes or mild nosebleeds. And in some cases, we'll monitor the labs of patients because elevated lipids and mild liver enzyme changes can occur. So your doctor might choose to monitor labs or if your risk is low, we may not. Oftentimes in my patients nowadays, after a thorough history, we may choose not to take labs on the patient. Now the biggest risk of Accutane and the reason that patients enroll in what's called the I pledge system in the United States is that there are teratogenic risks. A major caution is that isotretinoin can cause severe birth defects, so it is absolutely critical for people who can get pregnant to follow strict guidelines like using reliable contraception and undergoing monthly pregnancy testing. In fact, in the United States, women of childbearing potential must pledge to use two forms of contraception if they are sexually active. Now, another rare side effect that can occur is something called pseudotumor cerebri. This is a condition of increased pressure in the brain, and it's more likely to occur if you're taking certain antibiotics. 
So if you do take antibiotics while on a course of Accutane, it definitely need to let your doctor know that you're on Accutane because things like doxycycline and minocycline should be avoided. And if you need one of those, you should stop the Accutane prior to taking it. I have had one patient with this complication, again, over 10 years of prescribing Accutane, and they already knew that they had a risk for this because it had happened to them in the past, but they wanted to try Accutane anyway because the acne was severe. And as a result, after two days of taking Accutane, they started getting headaches, we stopped the medicine and they did just fine. But other than that one case where they knew they had a risk for it, I've never seen this occur in thousands of Accutane prescriptions. One other thing that I'll mention is that about, I would say 10 to 15% of people get achy, joint pains, muscle aches. It's usually low back pain while taking Accutane. And this is generally not limiting to your activity levels. I've had many patients who are athletes take Accutane and they're still able to compete and practice and do whatever they need to do. And the achiness does go away after we stop Accutane. The truth is though, that for most individuals with severe scarring acne, the benefits of Accutane often outweigh the risks under the right medical supervision. Now let's imagine you finished your course of Accutane and let's talk about what happens after you finish isotretinoin. The vast majority of patients don't experience any lasting side effects once they stop. The dryness resolves, any abnormal labs, if there were any, normalize and life goes on. I've taken Accutane myself and this has been my experience. There's no long-term effects that have negatively impacted my life. And the studies show that most people have no long-term consequences. Some people may have a little bit more persistent dryness, but this is rare in my experience. We also want to touch on relapse rates because although we look at Accutane as the gold standard for severe acne treatment, not everyone is done for good after one round. Studies show that 20 to 30% of people will see some acne come back down the line, and this varies depending on how severe your acne was to begin with, your age, and whether or not you completed a full course of the medication. After a course of Accutane, some people switch to or combine other therapies like topical retinol, like adapalene or tretinoin, or hormone regulating medications like birth control or spironolactone for women to help keep the breakouts from returning in full force. So the takeaway is, Isotretinoin can offer years of clear skin, but you might need measures to maintain the results, especially if your acne was particularly severe. Now I recognize that Accutane isn't the solution for everybody, or maybe you have somebody in your family who had a really bad experience with Accutane and you choose not to take it. So if you're hesitant about Accutane or you simply want additional support, I do wanna cover some evidence-based alternatives. First, we're gonna dive into oral supplementation. And the first thing that I'll touch upon is zinc supplements. And the reason is that zinc has antibacterial and anti-inflammatory effects. Some randomized controlled trials suggest that it's nearly as effective as certain oral antibiotics for mild to moderate acne. Usually not the kind of acne that we would prescribe Accutane for, but kind of a step below that. There's a couple of cautions that you need to be aware of though, if you're considering zinc supplementation for your acne. It is that high doses can cause nausea, upset stomach, and in some cases can lead to a copper deficiency. And you need copper in your body because it works on a whole bunch of different enzymes. So if you're considering zinc, I do recommend consulting with a healthcare provider first. Next up is vitamin B5. We call this pantothenic acid. And the reason is that it may help to reduce oil production. There was a small trial that showed improved acne severity with high dose pantothenic acid over 12 weeks. Typical doses of this are gonna range from about two to four grams a day. But again, I recommend that you check with your doctor before you start. The third supplement I wanna talk about is vitamin D supplementation. Many acne sufferers are deficient in vitamin D. Heck, lots of people in North America are deficient in vitamin D, and it's known for its anti-inflammatory properties. Studies have shown that when we correct a vitamin D deficiency, it leads to fewer inflammatory acne lesions. A common dose that you would get over the counter is about 1,000 to 4,000 international units daily, but you can also get your levels checked by your doctor before and after treatment to make sure that you're actually in normal ranges. And the last supplement that I want to touch on are omega-3 fatty acids, and this is because EPA and DHA from fish oil can help to reduce systemic inflammation. 
Trials have shown that patients taking 2,000 milligrams of EPA DHA daily had a significant reduction in both inflammatory and non-inflammatory acne lesions, and as a side effect, EPA is really good for your cardiovascular health. Now that we've covered a handful of supplements, I wanna talk about lifestyle factors that you can do to influence your acne. And the first regarding your diet is to have a low glycemic index diet. This is a reduction in high sugar, refined carb foods, and that has been shown to decrease acne lesions. We have a highly processed diet in the United States, and it's very easy to eat poorly. So you do have to make a concerted effort to find whole foods, vegetables, fruits, anything minimally processed, and generally avoiding refined carbohydrates. When it comes to dairy, particularly skim milk is linked to acne, so cutting back can help if you notice a connection. It's not the case for everybody, but if you tend to drink a lot of skim milk and you have bad acne, switch to a plant-based milk or a whole milk. Next up, we're going to touch on stress management and sleep. High stress and poor sleep can definitely lead to hormonal fluctuations that worsen your breakouts. I think anybody who has been through finals week in high school or college can attest to this. You're stressed, you're not sleeping, you're probably eating junk food, and your acne flares up like crazy around those times. But this goes for anybody who is stressed and not getting quality sleep. It will definitely lead to worsening acne. Another thing that I'd like to touch on are protein supplements. Some patients who consume a lot of whey protein will notice that it worsens their acne. Whey protein is slightly androgenic, so if you do notice a connection, I recommend a non-whey form of protein powder, especially if you're in the gym a lot. And that's not to mention at all all the different things that people at the gym might be injecting into their bodies. If you take some of these changes and pair them with a consistent skincare routine like gentle cleansing, non-comedogenic moisturizers, and targeted topical treatments like salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, or adapalene that you can get over the counter, it will help to improve your acne. I've got lots of other videos on the channel about building an acne routine, so you can check those out if you're interested in getting the right over-the-counter medicines to treat your acne. Now, all of these things are not a magic bullet for severe acne, but they can offer a meaningful difference over time when they're used consistently. So there you have it, the inside scoop on Accutane, its proven benefits, and some alternatives that can complement or in some cases replace prescription medications. The bottom line is that Accutane works wonders for severe acne, but it comes with the potential for some side effects and there are strict guidelines for use. After taking Accutane, relapses are possible, though many people find that they do get long-lasting relief. If you're uncomfortable with Accutane or you just want extra support, dietary supplements and lifestyle adjustments can go a long way to improve the quality of your skin and your overall health. Guys, as always, please remember that this video is for informational and educational purposes only, and it's not a substitute for professional medical advice. So if you have severe acne, I definitely recommend that you speak with a board-certified dermatologist about the risks and the benefits and what is the best plan for you. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share it with anybody else who might benefit from it. When you guys watch videos on the channel, it supports my mission to provide free dermatology care to underserved populations in my mobile clinic. I do that work for free, and everything here on YouTube helps to support that. If you've taken Accutane, I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments and what it was like. Guys, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.